Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Different stories are coming out today concerning uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea. First off on the plate here, we're finding out that North Korea leader holds off on Guam plan will watch U.S. a bit longer. This is according to the KCNA. This is, of course, uh, the own news agency coming out of North Korea what they're saying there. Now, is this actually a result of China? The Wall Street Journal reporting today that North Korea backs off threat to hit Guam hours after China took steps to support a UN sanctions. North Korea state media says Kim Jong-un uh, uh, un, you, excuse me, undecided not to fire on Guam. Could it be because uh, China now is going starting Tuesday to block coal imports, food imports, uh, uh, fish imports, etc., to the small nation that is very much a renegade nation? And if that's not to top it all off, seeing that the United States is ready, as General Mattis has said, who is actually now the Secretary of Defense for the United States under President Trump, said about North Korea, if they were to attack Guam, it is game on. But it's not the only thing. There's a smoking gun in the room when it comes to North Korea and one of the U.S.'s new staunch allies, Ukraine itself, and that they may be the very ones that have been supplying these advanced rocket boosters for the ICBMs. Remember, it was the United States that helped overthrow the government of Ukraine, uh, the pro-Russian Yanukovych government there in favor of Petro Poroshenko. Well, according to Tyler Durden with Zero Hedge, he writes here, when the U.S. State Department supported Ukraine's domestic forces and nationalist elements to stage a successful and deadly coup against then pro-Russian Russian President Viktor Yanukovych, in 2014, the outcome was supposed to be a nation that is undisputed U.S. ally and persistent threat, distraction, and non-NATO opponent uh, to bordering Russia. Instead, it now appears that it has been Ukraine, which was, uh, as the NYT writes, the secret behind the success of North Korea's allegedly nuclear-capable ballistic missile program. Specifically in the blockbuster reporting this, uh, this morning, the NYT alleges that North Korea has been making black market purchases of powerful rocket engines from a Ukraine factory, citing an expert analysis being published Monday and classified assessments by American intelligence agencies. The studies may solve the mystery of how North Korea began succeeding so suddenly after string of fiery missile failures, some of which may have been caused by American sabotage of its supply chains and cyber attacks on its launches. After those failures, the North changed designs and suppliers in the past two years, according to a new study by Michael Elliman, a missile expert at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Now, if Ukraine is arming North Korea. What do you think about Iran? I don't think Ukraine's uh, got anyone off of the list of their suppliers. And yet what's even worse is that we have military forces inside of Ukraine giving these guys directions on what to do with Donetsk and of course uh, that of Crimea. So we're dealing with a major problem, friends, a major problem. And finding out that North Korea, of course, is just a renegade state as it is, threatening uh, annihilation of, of its neighbors and even the United States hitting the mainland, trying to do d devastating uh, effects there, only to find out the very nation that the U.S. has been helping has been the very nation that has been arming and supplying the very means to do so. I think maybe the U.S. should reconsider its relationship with Ukraine. And maybe they should sign an agreement with Russia and get back in good relationship after all. Of course, that's not the only thing that's going on either. Russian Defense uh, Minister uh, Viktor, uh, uh, Sergei, uh, I forget Sergei's actual last name there, but he is actually saying that there is victory over ISIS and Azor. Uh, means an end of ISIS altogether. Uh, while the United States and its Kurdish proxies continue to fight for the besieged city of Raqqa, it is becoming increasingly apparent that the final stronghold of ISIS is the southeastern Syria city of Deir Azzord. The Syrian Arab army has scored important victories in Deir Azzord, 
uh, governate over the last month, which has brings the city ever closer to liberation. ISIS continues uh, to send reinforcements to Deir Zord as they are pushed out of both Iraq and other governates of this of Syria. This, so there is a tremendous advantage there. And then, of course, earlier today, we actually r removed the video that we posted a little bit earlier. It's mainly because I did not realize uh, we've been having so many internet technic uh, technical difficulties here that we had two different overlapping uh, clips in there. But what we did report earlier today, we're still holding as well, too, and that is that Russia has has said for the United States to leave Afghanistan. One Russian official has said that the U.S. should leave Afghanistan and let Russia come in and deal with the ISIS growing threat there in Afghanistan. According to the Russian officials, there has been unidentified, unmarked aircraft supplying ISIS inside of the country. Well, if you remember, we had reported here on Israeli News Live some of the information we had received from uh, our good friend there over at Already Happened, Lorenzo, that the ISIS members were indeed getting a lot of American-made weapons. Well, according to the Russian officials, there are unidentified aircraft that are moving in, flying in, and bringing weapons into the ISIS insurgents inside the country. And Russia finds this a growing threat for all the Eastern Bloc nation, nations over in that area there, and Russia is ready to go in there and deal with the problem directly themselves. Well, the United States Pentagon officials consider this a direct threat to the West, well, only time will tell. I'm sure many will actually consider it that way. Also, Angela Merkel, she is now stating that we can receive 40,000 more migrants into the European Union. Well, I guess after putting all the threats of sanctions on uh, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland, they figured they got room to help bring in a few more. Let's destabilize a few more countries while we're at it. Well, Angela Merkel seems to know exactly what she's doing, doing a great job thus far at exactly that. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. And good evening.